From a pro skier in the French Alps who plummeted 50 feet into a hidden crevasse and a 2,900-foot bridge in China that shook uncontrollably during a fierce windstorm, to a terrifying bear attack in Canada that left two hunters scrambling for cover, and a freak landslide in California that destroyed a major roadway. Here are 20 incredible moments caught on camera. The Philippines have been through a lot in the past 200 years. Back in 1898, the U.S. literally bought the island from Spain for 20 million. Then, in World War II, the Japanese bombed the crap out of it. Mindanao, the second largest island in the Philippines, bore the brunt of the damage. Meanwhile, the entire area remained vulnerable to powerful earthquakes. Then, in 2019, Cotabato, a small landlocked province on Mindanao, was hit with a series of violent earthquakes that resulted in widespread destruction. Some workers in a high-rise building captured firsthand just how terrifying these quakes can be. The 6.8 magnitude earthquake rocks the entire office. Light fixtures swing from the ceiling and the window shades flap like they're haunted. Workers run and scream as they head for the fire escape, as everyone's first reaction is, get the heck out of here. Our brave cameraman stays behind to document the experience, while his co-worker pops up and down from under her desk. Thankfully, everyone in the office building survived the ordeal. Hopefully, they got the next few days off to recover. Les Deux Alpes is a popular ski resort in the French Alps. The resort village sits about 5,400 feet above sea level, with the tallest lifts stretching to nearly 12,000 feet. It features some of the largest skiable glaciers in Europe, but don't get too excited. Glacier skiing takes years of practice and can be extremely dangerous. In April of 2022, a pro skier with over 10 years of experience got duped by soft snow. He thought he was about to glide through powder. Instead, he fell into an endless crevasse. Miraculously, his skis caught on a ledge after falling nearly 50 feet. He's lucky the rest of his team was only 20 minutes away. Then again, it was the longest 20 minutes of his life. His team had already done several runs down the glacier before he fell. He thought he was avoiding the hole. Instead, he skied clean into it. According to National Geographic, these things are often over 100 feet deep. Those who fall in rarely make it out. Thankfully, he didn't get hurt during the fall and even went back up the mountain when they pulled him out. The country of Indonesia is one that is filled with a staggering number of volcanoes. Here, they are all located along the Pacific Ring of Fire and threaten the lives of roughly 5 million people living in the region. Of the 147 volcanoes located in the country, the most active of them all is Mount Merapi. Back on May 11th of 2018, a group of Indonesian climbers decided to take a hike up this mountain. While cooking breakfast one morning at their campsite, the group heard a rumbling noise off in the distance. When they turned to see what it was, they were shocked to find that Mount Merapi had awoken as well and was now erupting only a few hundred feet away. Eh, 
Astaga, Eh, berlindung, 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 berlindung sini. Astagfirullahaladzim, 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 berlindung, astagfirullahaladzim, astag. Hai Pak King, Pak Tadi di depan mata saya menapi erupsi. Kementerian lagi, kementerian. Astagfirullahaladzim, erupsi menapi. Kita. The man filming the video, Chopin Pengetsu, later told reporters that everybody was caught by surprise. In the video, he can be heard telling climbers further up to take cover, and it wasn't long before everybody stopped what they were doing and began heading to safety. According to the government, it is estimated that ash from the eruption rose to a height of roughly 5,500 meters, or just over 18,000 feet. Miraculously, those in this video were able to escape without injury of any kind. The Humen Bridge is a 2,900-foot suspension bridge in Guangdong Province, China. It stretches over the Pearl River, connecting the Nansha district of Guangzhou to the town of Dongguan. About 80,000 cars drive across the Humen each day, but on May 5th of 2020, commuters had to find another way over the Pearl. It was around 3 p.m. local time. The bridge was packed with cars when a violent windstorm appeared out of nowhere. 38 mile per hour winds slammed into the bridge, causing it to wobble and wave like a roller coaster. They closed the bridge before anything happened, but someone on the ground still managed to record the nightmare scenario. According to Chinese experts, the waving didn't cause any damage to the bridge. Once the storm calmed down, they reopened it for travel. Drivers on the bridge described it as terrifying. Others said the waves made them carsick. It felt like they were on a roller coaster. Just imagine being trapped between all those cars. Your mind can only focus on the worst case scenario. Suspension bridges like this are meant to be streamlined, meaning they present as little wind resistance as possible. When engineers added a four-foot retaining wall, they basically built a wind-capturing sail. The wall was torn down to avoid a repeat event. Any bear expert will tell you the same simple rule. If it's black, fight back. If it's brown, lie down. That's because black bears and brown bears, aka grizzly bears, behave differently. On July 6th of 2018, hunters Caleb and Shannon ventured into the woods outside of Saskatoon, Canada. They took a boat downriver and set up a bait trap in the clearing. The idea was to lure some animals out of the woods. Instead, a mama bear showed up with her cubs. This is known as the worst bear situation you can be in, especially when mama bear can smell you. I said you only left once. These guys were about to learn the hard way that Mama Bear will do anything to protect her cubs. Thankfully, they lived to tell the tale. Even though Caleb and Shannon did everything you're not supposed to do, the bear backed off. Shannon only suffered a minor injury when he fell and sliced his finger. Brown bears attack because they feel threatened. That's why you're supposed to play dead. If you fight back, they'll continue to perceive you as a threat. The major difference is whether the bear is attacking you or not. Even if a bear bluff charges, it's not an attack. That's when you make yourself look big or back away slowly. It's only an attack when the bear makes contact. That's when you play dead if it's a brown bear. 
black bears are different. If they attack you, fight back with everything you have. On March 25th of 2014, a $50 million luxury apartment complex in Houston, Texas suddenly went up in flames. The building was still under construction and all the workers escaped through the bottom floor, all but one. 56-year-old Curtis Reese knew he was in serious danger. He was stuck on the top floor with no way of climbing down. The path behind him was blocked by fire, so all he could do was crawl onto the balcony and pray someone saw him. The fire department noticed the stranded worker, thus starting a race against the clock. Yeah, he was inside there. Do they freaking see him? Unbelievable. Oh my God. <gasps> hurry up. Please oh hurry God. Up. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Oh my God. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh. Oh my God. Keep going. Keep going. Look at the glass melting up there. They need to get him. Oh Jesus. <gasps> Oh God. Oh God. Get closer to him. Hell, he can jump from there. I mean, good grief. Fucking heavy jumping, man. <laughs> they need to move that truck up. Oh my God. I don't know why they're not evacuating. I think that we probably should be going. That's time to evacuate the for it, man. Hell yes. Oh, thank, oh, thank Jesus. Thank you, God. Curtis made it safely onto the ladder, but they weren't out of the woods yet. Oh my God. Ah! Oh no, oh my God. Oh. 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 Hey, hey, what about this guy? About this guy? Curtis escaped with minor burns on his face and hands. Later on, he said he decided to swing down from the fifth to the fourth floor once the flames got too close. It was a daring move, but waiting around wasn't a valid option. The fire chief said the fire likely started after a welding accident on the roof. When they arrived, they saw the welders trying to extinguish a small blaze. Then the wind picked up and spread the fire across the building. Locals in the farming village of Kuchpura, India, witnessed something phenomenal. On July 14th of 2021, a giant landmass suddenly arose from a murky river. The locals thought they were witnessing a sign from the gods. Instead, it was Mother Nature rejecting their bad farming practices. <laughs> अपने आप ही जमीन उठन रही पता नहीं भोले नाथ ने कर दिया जमीन जो तो भोले पर जान दे तो नहीं नहीं ठावेगा ओए आग लग देख आग लग बिकी देख सकते हो भाई पूरा पूरा ठा दिया ओ शुक्र मान के ना लगाई है इसके पसी ने चीज लाती है जीरी होएगी भाई इसके जीरी बच जाएगी बाकी तो रह जाएंगे डोल तो मत डाल तो डाल ली डोल तो मत डाल ली तू डोल तो वारी ऊपर ऊपर it looked more like a secret military base rising out of the water. At points, the landmass stood 10 feet tall. But what was it? According to reports, this wasn't some rare geological event. Instead, it was the result of bad farming. To improve his yield, the landowner dug a 10-foot hole and filled it with rice husk ashes and sand. Then, he sowed more rice on top. 
Then, on July 13th, heavy rain sunk deep into the soil and penetrated the buried material. The pressure caused the land to rise like a balloon. Chiang Mai, Thailand is the second largest city in the country. About 1.2 million people live in the mountainous region, also known as the Thai Highlands. In December of 2020, they got to host the Miss Thailand Beauty Pageant. The pageant got off to a rocky start due to COVID-19. They normally hold it in Bangkok, but the dense population and risk of infection was too high. So they chose the less populated Chiang Mai and a cute little cafe overlooking a not-so-cute pond. At one point, the girls gathered on a rope bridge for pictures. Maybe someone should have checked the weight limit. <laughs> of the 30 contestants, only three suffered a few cuts and bruises when the bridge collapsed. The cafe's owner was so embarrassed that he offered to cover everyone's hospital bill and pay to have their clothes cleaned. He donated half a million Thai baht, or about $14,000. In Thailand, beauty pageants have boomed in popularity. There are regional and national events that can help young girls break into the modeling and fashion industry. They can win hundreds of thousands of dollars in cash prizes and earn lucrative sponsorships. They just have to avoid falling into gross pond water. Canyon Country is a small neighborhood in Santa Clarita, California. Of the city's four neighborhoods, Canyon Country is the most populated. So, when a landslide on November 20th of 2015 buckled a two-mile stretch of road, the locals had to find a different way into town. It was around 10.30 a.m. Public works officials were driving down Vasquez Canyon Road when they noticed it was all torn up. The mountain was moving, and a landslide had wiggled under the road and buckled the pavement. It literally looked like a smaller mountain was growing underneath. Paul Funk, who works with the LA County of Public Works, said the road was closed indefinitely. Fixing it would take a long time. That's unfortunate because Vasquez Canyon connects two major roads leading in and out of Santa Clarita. They said more than half the road was raised about 15 feet in the air. Clearly, landslides and roads don't get along. Check out what happened to this highway in Arunachal Pradesh, India, when the mountain gave out underneath. Due to heavy rain, India is highly prone to freak landslides. The summer of 2021 was a particularly rainy monsoon season. Several other landslides occurred in the area, one of which took out a bridge. Thankfully though, nobody was injured. With more and more rain falling around the world, I'm sure we'll see many more videos like this in the future. People love blowing stuff up. Those who want a little extra and legal boom can head down to their local outdoor store and grab some Tannerite. It's a mix of ingredients patented by its creator, Daniel Tanner. All you have to do is mix, shake, and shoot. The best part? It's legal in almost every state. On March 16th of 2014, a Tannerite enthusiast decided this old dilapidated barn was ready to be demolished. So, he loaded 164 pounds of explosives into a plastic storage container and took a few steps back. All he needed was a well-placed shot to blow the barn sky high. All right, so we cleared out all the metal railing, the cattle fencing uh, from here, and that was out behind uh, the back of the barn. It's back there laying on the ground, just flat back behind the hill. But we tried to clear out all the metal. That'll be the last piece we take out. Uh, with the tan right up on the target. Hundred and sixty four pounds.
As you can see, Tannerite can pack a serious punch. Even so, the ATF doesn't regulate its sale. That's because the individual components aren't explosive. One could easily buy them off the shelf and make their own. You still need a high-velocity projectile to finish the job. Otherwise, Tannerite is safe in its static state. Our Tannerite enthusiast, we'll call him Nixon, is clearly a showman. He was kind enough to include a slow-motion replay of the barn explosion. He also included some aftermath footage of what remains of the barn. <laughs> oh, oh <my>. no. <laughs> <laughs> How to remove the barn. Was that about what you thought would happen? No, I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> That is 164 pounds of Tannerite. <laughs> Nixon was pretty blunt about why he blew up the barn. In his own words, because I can. Overall, I'd say his mission was a success. In March of 2017, locals in southeastern Manitoba, Canada began seeing this odd-looking orange helicopter flying all over the sky. It was an Ericsson air crane, and its job was to install 334 new electrical towers as part of a public works project. As you're about to see, it takes extreme precision to fly one of these things. Those are some of the craziest pilot skills we've ever seen. As they say, practice makes perfect. Apparently, our pilot can do this all day. In fact, they can set up nearly 20 towers per day by helicopter, but only four towers with normal cranes. Using helicopters also reduces their construction footprint. They don't have tons of heavy vehicles driving all over the fertile farmland. Afula is a small city of about 60,000 people in northern Israel. It's often called the capital of the valley due to its strategic location in the Jezreel Valley. On June 25th of 2014, a seasoned pilot and a student took a Cessna 152 out for a few training exercises. Emergency landings weren't on the day's schedule. Our flight student was about to learn why you can't panic under pressure. <laughs> According to an incident report, the plane suffered a total power failure mid-flight. Thanks to his years of experience, our pilot easily pulled off an emergency landing. It was either that or nosedive into a field. Thankfully, our pilot had a nice open area to land in. He used the trees and wings to stop the plane, 
and everyone walked away unharmed. Nobody likes getting caught in a storm. If you've ever found yourself outside without an umbrella, then you definitely know what we mean. For these people in Queensland, Australia, though, a little rain would definitely have been better than the violent hailstorm they got caught in. It doesn't seem that bad at first, but trust me, just wait. Don't move, guys. Oh, the caravan's gonna get wrecked. Oh, no. Don't move, guys. We would keep playing the footage, but the storm never really lets up by the end of it. By the video's climax, hailstones cover the family's yard and street. After several terrifying minutes, the violence subsides and the hail turns into the rain they hoped for. The November 2019 hailstorm was so bad that the Australian Insurance Council declared it a catastrophe that caused $40 million in damage. Over 5,000 claims flooded into the office, mostly for damaged vehicles. One car lot filed claims on 200 cars, and a farmer reported $200,000 worth of damage. It's a miracle that nobody got hurt in the storm, because I don't think even an umbrella would have helped all that much. Lions Bay is a small community about 40 minutes north of Vancouver, Canada. It's among the smallest communities in British Columbia, but it's home to one of the most dangerous kayaking runs on Earth. On August 21st of 2018, Adrian Matern and his two friends stumbled upon an old drainage ditch in the mountains. All three are experienced whitewater kayakers sponsored by Red Bull. So, instead of seeing it as dangerous, they recognized it as fun. With GoPros strapped to their helmets, all three took off on a 50 mile per hour race to the ocean below. Three. You good? I'm good. Who's going first? I'm going first. Okay. I'm go Things looked pretty grim when their kayaks began spinning around. Thankfully, they regained control and landed safely in the ocean. According to his Red Bull profile, Adrian loves mastering extreme mental and physical challenges in his kayak. He's always looking for new spots to push his skills. In his own words, he likes thinking outside the box. Others don't share his enthusiasm. Peter De Jong, the chief administrative officer of Lions Bay, says anyone kayaking down the storm drain is trespassing on private property. 
Lions Bay does not condone the activity in any way. Forest fires are among the most dangerous issues facing our planet. Australian brush fires are pretty bad all year round, and we all know how much damage fires cause in California every summer. Aerial firefighters constantly train to fight these blazes as best they can. Now, you've probably seen footage of planes and helicopters dropping tons of water and flame retardant material on the forest, but watching them train, specifically how precise they are, is pretty awesome to say the least. The plane takes off from the runway, and the pilot circles back to line up his shot. He keeps his hand ready to drop his payload as he aligns the plane with the car on the ground. The plane dips a few hundred feet before dropping 9,000 pounds of fire-retardant goop on top of the vehicle. The weight rips the car to shreds, and a camera on the inside gives us a great shot of the thick pink substance. Some aerial firefighting planes can drop 170,000 pounds of material on a wildfire. The payloads can cover more land as they get bigger, with smaller planes covering between 300 and 1,800 feet, and bigger planes stretching their pink goo for over a mile. Ejector seats save lives. Without them, countless pilots, including Neil Armstrong, would have gone down with their planes. On May 6th of 1968, Armstrong was test flying an LLRV, also known as a Lunar Landing Research Vehicle. He had been up in the RV 20 times before. He knew it like the back of his hand. However, mechanical issues can get the best of anybody, even Neil Armstrong. At first, everything looks fine. Neil brings the RV in for a landing, but then he suddenly takes off again. A mechanical failure caused Armstrong to lose control, and the RV veered off on its own. Knowing he couldn't stop it, Neil pressed the ejector button and launched from the seat. He landed safely while the RV crashed into Ellington Air Force Base. Instead of calling it quits for the day, he brushed the dust off and went back to his desk. Fast forward 41 years to 2009, when planes got sleeker and much faster. It was May 15th in Kandahar, Afghanistan. Lieutenant Martin Pert of the Royal Air Force was due to land his Harrier GR-9 at the base. Unfortunately, it didn't go as expected. Another pilot landed before Martin. Then, a hostile missile alert forced him to come in short. He tried to pull up to slow the plane, but the tail struck the runway. Thanks to Martin's ejector seat, he lived to tell the story. The Iran hostage crisis was a pivotal moment in U.S.-Iran relations. On November 4th of 1979, a militarized group of Iranian college students took over the U.S. Embassy in Tehran. They took 52 American diplomats hostage for 444 days until they were finally released on January 20th of 1981. During those 444 days, the U.S. government tried everything in its playbook to rescue the hostages and negotiate a safe release. Through a joint venture between the Air Force, Navy, and Lockheed Georgia, Operation Credible Sport was launched. The plan was to rig a Lockheed C-130 Hercules with rocket engines, allowing for quick takeoff and landing. Ideally, it'd be able to land and take off from a soccer field in Tehran instead of needing a massive runway. First, they conducted individual tests on each crucial component, takeoff, flight, and landing. Those tests went well so they moved to full-scale tests on October 29th. The takeoff rockets worked flawlessly. It's the landing that gave them trouble. Basically, the reverse thrusters cut all forward momentum, and the plane fell to the runway. The crash caused one of the wings to break, but thankfully, everyone was okay. The Credible Sport project was terminated on November 2nd, when the Iranian government accepted a plan to release the hostages. Still, seeing these massive planes using rockets to take off and land is a sight to behold. 
and a piece of American history we may never see again. The scenic roads around Notodden, Norway are a great place for a casual drive. On January 12th of 2015, a local man decided to take his Mercedes out for a spin. Unfortunately, he had a little engine trouble partway through. He pulled over at the top of the hill when he saw smoke rising from the engine. He engaged the parking brake and quickly called the fire department. They arrived and began spraying the car with water. All seemed fine until the parking brake melted. They're lucky the guardrail held up, or that car would have landed in someone's backyard. Once the parking brake failed, the pressure from the fire hoses was enough to roll the car. When gravity entered the fray, there was nothing our firefighters could do. Thankfully, the fire didn't spread. The fire trucks backed down the road and finished the job. We're not sure if our cameraman is the owner or if he was just standing by. Kangaroo Island is a 1,700 square mile island off the coast of southern Australia. It's usually a peaceful place where kangaroos, koalas, and penguins enjoy a secluded life away from the mainland. But that all changed during the 2019 and 2020 brush fire season. Several fires ripped across the island, burning a quarter of it away by January 4th. Firefighters arrived as the blaze torched trees and surrounding grasslands. There was nothing they could do but watch when the fire got so hot that it spun into a dangerous fire tornado. The men are forced to take cover in their trucks as the fire NATO heads straight toward them. We can't imagine how hot those spinning winds must be, and that's on top of the average weather in southern Australia. The fire NATO grows more intense every second as our firefighters remain a safe distance away. The tornado eventually dies down, leaving a charred path of destruction in its wake. Several kangaroos hop away from the fire, hopefully making it somewhere far away. Sadly, the fires devastated wildlife across Kangaroo Island. About 48,000 koalas were living on the island before December of 2019. By the time they put the fire out, only 8,500 were left. Back in December of 2021, Typhoon Rai wreaked havoc across the Philippines. The Category 5 Super Typhoon was the second costliest in Philippine history, dealing $1.02 billion in damages and forcing President Rodrigo Duterte to declare a state of calamity. Desperate times fell upon the Filipino people, especially those whose fishing boats were lost to Rai's powerful winds. Locals gathered along the waterway in Bayawan City to inspect what remained of their fleets. 
they noticed they were missing a lot of boats. Then, they noticed their worst nightmare floating down the river. A floating barge of tangled fishing boats and debris comes floating down the waterway, crashing into everything still docked. All our local fishermen can do is watch and hope their boats don't suffer any more damage than they already have. Our crew runs after the barge to keep recording. We imagine at least several dozen fishing boats are fused in that monstrosity. Now, cost aside, Rai was one of the most powerful storms to ever make land in the Philippines. It intensified to a Category 5 storm as it neared the islands, with winds gusting well over 100 miles per hour. According to NPR, Rai stretched 600 miles across when it made landfall. By the time it left, it had displaced almost half a million people and claimed hundreds of lives. While these people's boats definitely were either severely damaged or destroyed, at least they survived the storm with their lives. If you enjoyed this video and want to see another one just like it, then be sure to click the link on screen now. As always, thanks for watching and be sure to tune in next time.